Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn how to calculate thermal energy changes of a system using the thermal energy equation that we see right here. So, how do we calculate thermal energy changes? Well, it says right here that the amount of thermal energy a system absorbs or releases as it heats up or cools down can be quite easily calculated using the thermal energy equation below. So if we take a look at this thermal energy equation, what this is telling us is that the total amount of thermal energy that is either released or absorbed by a system is equal to the specific heat capacity of that object times the mass of that object in grams and times the change in temperature of that object typically in degrees Celsius. So if we know these three things about an object, if we know the specific heat capacity, if we know the mass of an object, and we know its change in temperature, then we can quite easily calculate Q, or the amount of thermal energy the system is either releasing or absorbing as it either A, cools down, or B, heats up. And so right here, if we take a look, if your final answer is negative, if Q is negative when using this thermal energy equation, then that's going to mean that the system is releasing releasing energy. It's releasing energy and is therefore cooling down. And if we take a look right here, if Q is positive, then that means that the system or the substance that you're talking about is absorbing thermal energy. And then in that case there, the system is heating up. Okay, so Q is the amount of thermal energy released or absorbed by the system, typically in joules. C is the specific heat capacity, typically in joules per gram degree Celsius. M is typically the mass in grams, and delta T, this little triangle is the Greek letter of the alphabet delta, and it literally means change in, change in temperature, so the change in temperature. Okay, so let's take a look at a sample problem where we can apply this idea of Q equals C times M times delta T. All right, so let's take a look at this problem right here. It says, determine the amount of thermal energy associated with 500 grams of water heating up from 10 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius. So if we take a look right here, we have a beaker of water and in this water we have 550 grams of it, right? And the starting temperature of this water is 10 degrees, so it's some pretty chilly water. And we're going to throw this beaker on a hot plate and we're going to crank it up. We're going to turn this up so that our water over here is going to end up 90 degrees Celsius. So we have the same amount of water, we have 550 grams of it still, but its temperature has increased since we've turned on this hot plate. And we want to know, what we want to know is how much thermal energy, how much Q must this water here absorb in order to raise its temperature from 10 degrees to 90 degrees Celsius. Well, we can use the thermal energy equation to figure this out, right? All we need to do here is take Q equals the specific heat of the object times the mass of the object times the change in temperature and we can quite easily figure out how much thermal energy this water here is going to need to absorb to bring it from 10 degrees to 90 degrees. So what is the specific heat capacity of water? Well in an earlier video we learned that the specific heat capacity of liquid water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, right? So we're going to go ahead and put here 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times the mass of this water, which is 550 grams, times the change in temperature. How do we get delta T? To get delta T, it's simple. We take T final minus T initial. So if we take a look, the final temperature is 90 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature which is 10 degrees Celsius and we're going to end up with a temperature difference of 80 degrees. So we'll put that right here and now we just put this into our calculator and we're going to end up with 183,920 joules, joules of energy. Let's take a look. We have grams on bottom, grams on top. There can't Canceling out degrees Celsius on bottom and top, they cancel out, leaving us with joules left over. And so, if we take a look here, because the sine of Q is positive, that means that this water here is going to have to absorb 183,920 joules of thermal energy. Let's take a look now at a specific heat capacity table and understand what that means before we start working on a few more examples ourselves. 
Okay, so what we're looking at right here is a table of specific heat capacities. You can get this on the internet, you can get it from a textbook, but basically what this shows you is the specific heat capacities of different objects. For example, aluminum, it tells us the specific heat capacity is 0 0.878 joules per gram degree Celsius. What that means is if I have one gram of aluminum and I want to raise its temperature from 50 degrees to 51 degrees, this one gram of aluminum is going to need to absorb 0.878 joules of thermal energy. If we take a look right here at gold, the specific heat capacity of gold is 0 0.129. This means that if you have one gram of gold and you want to raise its temperature from 72 to 73, one little degree Celsius, then this one gram of gold is going to need to absorb 0 0.129 joules of thermal energy. Okay, so understand that concept. Understand what these values mean. Okay, understand that it takes uh, a lot of energy to heat water up compared to that of a metal like gold or lead. Okay, so we can use this table of specific heat capacities to solve problems where we're asked to determine how much thermal energy something either absorbs or releases. So let's use this table some more to work on four different problems together. In this problem, it says determine the amount of thermal energy associated with 350 grams of iron heating up from 20 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius. So in this problem here, we're asked to calculate thermal energy or Q. That's what we're trying to find. It looks like the mass of this object is right here, 350 grams. It looks like we're talking about iron, so we can refer to our specific heat capacity table. And we can see that the specific heat capacity of iron is right here. And last but not least, its temperature is going from 20 to 120. So quite simply, we can see that the increase in temperature is going to be 100 degrees. And since we're heating it up, that's going to be a positive 100 degrees. So we know that Q equals C times M times delta T. And we know that the specific heat capacity of iron is 0 0.452, 0 0.452 joules per gram times degrees Celsius. The mass of this iron is in grams already, 350 grams. And we're going to multiply this by the change in temperature. To get the change in temperature, you take the final temperature minus the initial temperature. You could easily do this in your head. 120 minus 20 is 100 degrees Celsius. And so now we're going to get out our calculator. And we're going to take 0.452 times 350 times 100. And we're going to end up with 15,820. 15,820. Well, what's the unit that we're going to attach here? We have grams on bottom, grams on top. They cancel out. Degrees Celsius on bottom and top. They cancel out, leaving us with joules. So final answer is going to be 15,820 joules. But what does this answer mean? Well, this means that this 350 gram sample of iron is going to have to absorb, since the sign here is positive, since the sign here is positive, that means that the, uh, the, the iron is going to have to absorb, right? It's going to have to absorb 15,820 joules of thermal energy. And that makes this an endothermic process, right? Endothermic. Let's take a look at another problem. In this second example right here, it says to calculate the specific heat capacity of a metal and determine its identity. If 100 grams of it releases 4,500 joules and has its temperature decrease from 200 to 100 degrees Celsius. So in this problem here, we're asked to solve for the specific heat capacity of this metal. And then what we need to do is determine its identity by looking at a table of specific heat capacity. So in this problem, we know that Q equals C times M times delta T. And in this problem, we're asked to solve for C to find the specific heat capacity of this object. So to isolate C and get it all by itself on one side of that equal sign, we're going to have to divide both sides by M delta T. And so the formula that we're going to use to solve this problem is going to be C equals Q over M delta T. And in this problem, this is telling us that it's releasing 4,500 
joules of energy, right? So here is Q and Q happens to be negatives. It's releasing energy. So don't forget that Q is going to be negative. So we have a negative 4,500 joules. And we're going to divide this by the mass of the metal. The mass of the metal is 100 grams times the change in temperature. And so to get the change in temperature of something, you take the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And so if we take a look, the final temperature is 100 degrees. And the initial temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. And if we subtract this, we will get a negative 100 degrees Celsius. So times a negative 100 degrees Celsius. And so when we put this in our calculator, when we take negative 4,500 divided by 100 divided by another 100, we will end up with 0 0.450 joules on top per grams degrees Celsius on the bottom. And so all we need to do now that we found our specific heat capacity of this metal is we need to look at a table of known specific heat capacities. And if we look and find point four five zero it looks like we're really close to this right here it looks like iron specific heat capacity is 0 0.4452 we got 0 0.450 we're going to go ahead and say that this metal here this unknown metal is going to be iron based on our uh, a table of specific heat capacities in this third example it says that a sample of copper releases 14,500 joules in order to cool it from 75 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius and we need to determine the mass of the piece of copper. So in this problem here we're asked to figure out the mass of this piece of uh, copper here and so we know that Q equals C times M times delta T and we're asked to solve for M. So we need to get M all by itself on one side of the equal sign and the way that we do that is by, by dividing by C and delta T on both sides. C and delta T cancels from the right hand side of this formula. And it looks like to get the mass, we will take the amount of thermal energy either released or absorbed and divide it by C and delta T. And so in this problem, if we read the question, the copper is releasing 14,500 joules. So we're going to have a negative 14,500 joules. And if we take a look at our table right here, copper has a specific heat capacity of 0 0.387 joules per gram degree Celsius. And if we take a look in the word problem, the mass, I'm sorry, the change in temperature is right here. And to get the change in temperature, we take the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And so it looks like our final temperature is 5 degrees Celsius, and we're going to subtract it. Uh, we're going to subtract 75 degrees Celsius as our initial temperature, and we're going to end up with a temperature change of negative 70 degrees Celsius. And so when we put this in our calculator, negative 14,500 divided by 0.387 divided by 70, we will end up with, or divided by negative 70, sorry, we will end up with 535.3 grams. So the mass of this copper here is going to be 535.3 grams. Let's take a look at another example. In this problem here, in this final example, it says a 10.5 kilogram sample of aluminum. So here is our mass. We're dealing with aluminum, so we can get our specific heat capacity from our table right here. Has an initial temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. So this right here is the initial temperature. If it is going to absorb 35,000 joules of thermal energy, so here is Q, and because it's absorbing, that's going to be positive then what will its final temperature be? So we are asked to figure out the final temperature of this piece of aluminum. Well, to figure out the final temperature, we probably should figure out what delta T is first. And once we figure out the change in temperature using this formula, we can add it to the initial temperature and we will get our final answer. So let's do that. We know that Q equals C times M times delta T. 
And we're going to solve for delta t now. So we divide both sides by c and m. They will cancel out here. And so delta t is going to equal q over c times m. And so in this problem, what is Q? Well, it says it's absorbing 35,000 joules of energy. So a positive 35,000 joules of energy. The sign is positive because it's absorbing that much energy. The specific heat capacity of aluminum is 0 0.878. 0 0.878 joules over grams times degrees Celsius times the mass. What is the mass? The mass, it says right here, is 10.5 kilograms. However, when we plug this into the formula right here, we need to convert this kilograms to grams. And so how do we do that? We move this decimal to the right one, two, three times, and we will end up with 10500 or 10,500 grams. All right, so now we'll put this into our calculator and we end up with 3.8, 3.8. So there is our delta T. This here is not the final answer though, right? This is just the change in temperature, okay? So here is our initial temperature, okay? And so to get the final temperature, to get our final temperature, we take delta T and we're gonna add it to the initial temperature. And so our delta T, we just figured out is 3.8. We're gonna add this, I'm sorry, degrees Celsius. We're gonna add this to the initial temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna end up with 18.8 degrees Celsius. So that is going to be our final answer, okay? So it says right here that if this 10.5 kilogram sample of aluminum whose starting temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, if it absorbs 35,000 joules of energy, its final temperature is going to be 18.8 .8 degrees Celsius. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner, and that's gonna subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments down in the comments section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.